Now that we've learned how to create drawings, create our own model views, add some dimensions and annotations, and look at really most of the aspects of the basics of drawings, the last thing we really need to talk about is how to save that out, how to really get it out there to a customer, a contractor, or somebody else just to view it. Now, you can obviously save it in SolidWorks. That's the default. You need to have it saved so you can manipulate it and edit it. But there are really a couple options that you have if you want to pass it along to somebody else. The first option is obviously to print it, hand them a paper copy, and all you really need to do is go to print and make sure that you have either an A4 size and you're dealing with eight and a half by 11, or that you have a plotter that can handle the size of sheet that you're dealing with. Another option, instead of going to save, is go to save as. Now, when we go to save as, if we change the save as type, you notice that in the drop down we can save it as a few different options. Really, the main ones that we want to talk about are Adobe. We have a PDF option. We can save it as a JPEG, PNG, or a TIFF file. Now you'll notice that there is also an Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop file. Now these can be very handy because in some cases when you export your drawings, you'll actually get the physical lines as selectable entities in those programs. So if you need to use that sort of information, you do have the available option to export them in those Adobe formats. Most cases, you're going to want to export a PDF. Now, when you select PDF, you have an option to view after saving, and there's an options section. Now, inside here, you want to make sure that you take a look at some of these options. PDF and color can be very important, especially if you're dealing with shaded views that maybe have specific materials or decals applied to them and so on. Embedded fonts, again, very handy. High quality lines, you can change it up to 600 DPI, so you can get a very clear and sharp output. High quality shaded edges, if you have a header or a footer that you want to print, and so on. You can also modify if you have multiple layers in your drawings, include layers that are set to not print, you can print those as well to PDF. So once you do that, you can save it, and it's going to prompt you to select which sheets you want to export. So this is again a case where if you have a single sheet that has multiple views on it and you copy that to other sheets and you want to manipulate those, you don't have to save them all out. In this case, I'll take both out to PDF, we'll view it, and now we have sheet one. And on sheet one, it shows you the drawing view and you can zoom into those quickly and easily. And then we have sheet two, which shows you again, both drawing views and all the information that goes along with it. So very cool way that you can export this information. We also have the option to create an eDrawings file. So you can publish an eDrawings file, all sheets. Again, you can select specific sheets and say, okay. Now, depending on which eDrawings viewer you have, if you've never done it before, you might have to register or select register later for it to open up eDrawings. Now, eDrawings is a very handy tool because you can export not only your drawing files, but you can export your parts, your assemblies, even your simulation results can be exported into eDrawings. Once eDrawing opens, let's go ahead and expand this. You notice that we get a few different things here. First of all, we have one sheets displayed on the screen. This is the original sheet or sheet one inside of our drawing. You notice that it displays some of the views shaded automatically. Now there are different ways that we can control this, but really let's just take a look at what we have. We have our views, we have the alternate positions, and we have multiple sheets that we can select. For instance, sheet two, shows us the original assembly view and the exploded view with the lines. Now, as you go in here, you have options to select the borders, show the borders around drawing views and so on. There's also options in here to show layouts, pointers and overview. You get this little tooltip box that pops up and you can get a good view of what's going on. Now, as we look at this, there's also options for things like stamped. If you want to approve this drawing, if this drawing is okay, you can pass it along. You can do things like animate the difference between all the views. You notice that it goes to different views on your sheet, and it's a good way to go between multiple views inside of each individual sheet. Let's go back to sheet one, take a look at some of the other things that we can do. When you save out an eDrawings file in SolidWorks, you have the option to allow users to measure. Now, it's something that you can turn on and off when you do a save as an eDrawings file. If you don't want them to be able to measure, you can leave it off and they won't have that option. But if you turn it on, they'll be able to do things like measure positions between components or measure the size of certain components and so on. But the eDrawings tool is very handy because you're not just sending a PDF off, you're sending off something that is a little bit more interactive. You can move it around, you can rotate, you can zoom in, 
Um, you can look at different views. You can change it from shaded to wireframe. You can mark it up. So you can add comments in here. You can insert specific images. You can look at some of the stamps that are automatically in here, like approved, draft, confidential, internal only, and so on. And it's a great tool that you can pass things around. Now, once it's sent to eDrawings, you still have to do a little bit more. You have to go to file and you have to go to either save or save as. If the end user has eDrawings installed, you can simply save it as an e part, an e assembly, or an e drawing. You'll notice that the file type is edrw. I'm going to go ahead and save it, but I don't want to show the folder that it just came up. So I'm going to do a save and then I'll go back to save as. Or you can go to save as and you can select the file type that you wanna save. Now in this case, it's an EDRW, but if we scroll down, you'll notice that we can save it as a zip file, we can save it as an EXE or even an HTML file. You also have options to save them just as specific image files like a JPEG or a bitmap. But the handy thing here is if you send somebody a zip file, It'll not only send them the eDrawings file, but also be able to have everything zipped up together. The EXE file will allow them to actually run the file, or you can send them an HTML version, and that way they can open it up as a web page. When you save a file as an HTML file, you will have to have Internet Explorer, I believe 5.5 or above, in order to view that. As far as I know, it won't be displayed in Chrome or Firefox, it will have to have Internet Explorer. So that is one drawback to using the HTML file or HTM file, but most people can install eDrawings Viewer pretty quickly and easily. It is a free application you can get from the SolidWorks website without too much trouble. And again, you can send them the zip or the exe file as long as there's no restrictions on their end for viewing those. But if you decide to use eDrawings format to send your drawings, to send your parts, assemblies, simulation results, or whatever the case might be, it's very handy to have anybody on the other end. Just go ahead and install the program. It's free, it's easy to use. And that way there's a quick transfer of data without having too much of a lag and having to figure out intermediate formats that you can save them as.